On today's show, a Dutch EV travels over 700 kilometers on just 60 kilowatt hours of electricity, Tesla pushes FSD V9 to its beta testers, and it looks pretty impressive, and Rivian announces that the launch date for the R1T and R1S will be pushed back again, this time to September. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar, and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. The Lightyear One, a super sleek aerodynamic solar car designed by a Dutch company founded by alumni of solar team Eindhoven, has managed to drive an astounding 710 kilometers using just 60 kilowatt hours of electricity. The feat, which took place at the Aldenhoven Testing Center in Germany, saw the car drive for more than nine hours around a closed test track. And while this kind of long-distance feat is normally achieved by a car driving at stupidly low speeds, the average speed of the Lightyear One during this test was in a reasonably acceptable 85 kilometers per hour, which is 52 miles per hour, or just below the average speed limit for most rural roads in Europe. The four-seat EV is due to go on sale in the first half of next year, but it won't be cheap. After a pretty long wait and several pushbacks in its planned launch, Tesla has pushed its full self-driving V9 beta software to cars belonging to customers signed up to its beta software test program. Capable of a higher level of autonomous vehicle assistance than ever before, Tesla's V9 FSD system makes use of Tesla's new Tesla Vision software, and we've already seen examples of the system online tracking roundabouts, gravel tracks, highways, surface streets, and country roads. While it is the closest FSD has been to autonomous operation, Tesla is still very explicit about the system, warning drivers to pay attention at all times and be ready to take over as required. Because of the rules associated with Tesla's beta program, not everyone who's taking part is able to share their experiences publicly, but thanks to Dirty Tesla on YouTube for allowing us to share their footage here. You rock. For a couple of years now, you've been able to get your hands on an all-electric Harley-Davidson in the form of the Livewire, a motorcycle that's not only marked the brand's entry into the electric motorcycle world, but also spawned the Livewire sub-brand. This week, the company launched a new Livewire variant, the Livewire One. With roughly the same specs as its predecessor, the Livewire, this new bike starts from an MSRP $1 shy of 22 grand, nearly $10,000 less than the OG Livewire. That's still a lot of cash for an electric motorcycle, even after you factor in a two and a half thousand possible dollar federal tax credit in the US, but it does at least suggest that Harley-Davidson has some economies of scale that can drop the sticker price. We're going to try and get our hands on one to ride, and when we do, we'll of course share the review here. US President Joe Biden has signed a new executive order that tackles right to repair concerns head on, directing the Federal Trade Commission to issue rules preventing manufacturers from imposing restrictions on independent device repair shops and DIY repairers. While most outlets have focused on the impact that this would have on tech companies known for their restrictive practices, Apple, I'm looking at you, it could also make it easier for electric car owners to keep their vehicles on the road. As I'm sure you know, many automakers, including Tesla, are anti-right to repair, and if this FTC issues new rules on the matter, it could force them to open up both user manuals and component specifications to lay the path for more affordable repairs and pattern parts. How would you feel if an independent review site like Yelp was acquired by a large fast food chain like McDonald's? You'd likely feel that Yelp would lose its impartiality, right? Well, in the plug-in vehicle world, that's exactly what's happened. Except it's not McDonald's and Yelp, but rather US charging provider EVgo and Recargo, the latter being the company that owns PogShare, a global EV charging site database that's earned a reputation for being reliable and impartial. EVgo says that the acquisition, worth $25 million, will help it grow the EV driver base and enhance the customer experience. Given EVgo is already in hot water over some of its charging policies, including banning any modified or DIY EVs from its network, I can't see PlugShare remaining impartial. And that, frankly, is sad. 
Chinese automaker NIO, which has managed to make electric vehicle battery swapping a successful part of its business model, has said it will dramatically expand the number of battery swap stations it operates worldwide. The announcement, made during last week's Power Day event in Shanghai, will see NIO deploy an additional 4,000 battery swap stations worldwide in the next four years across multiple continents. So far, NIO says it successfully completed 2.9 million battery swap sessions, as well as 600,000 valet operated click for power operations, where a NIO service specialist comes to pick up your car to take it to be recharged. With NIO already in Europe and wanting to launch in the US, this is certainly one to watch. Electrify America announced this week that it would expand the size of its current network in the US by 2025, growing the number of locations served by Electrify America from 800 to 1,700 and the number of charging stalls from 3,500 to 9,500. The expansion was made possible by a larger than expected cash injection from Volkswagen, who was originally forced by the courts in the US to put more than $2 billion into the company as penance for Dieselgate in the US. With Electrify America quickly becoming one of the most reliable non-Tesla networks in the US, Volkswagen is also rumored to be looking for partners to join in and help expand the network even further, in a move which could see EA become jointly owned by many different OEMs. SPACs, special purpose acquisition companies, have had their biggest year to date, with more companies than ever before falling over themselves to get SPACs to gain access to the stock market. And frankly, we've lost count of how many automakers and infrastructure companies have paired up with SPACs this year to go public. Now, though, there's a new one to add to the list, Aurora, an autonomous vehicle startup founded by former Google self-driving expert Chris Urmson. The company is set to merge with reInvent Technology Partners in a deal that's worth 2.5 billion US dollars in cash, and it will see Aurora gain extra investment to help it bring its autonomous vehicles to market. Right now, it has partnerships with Toyota, Uber, Volvo, and Packard. At the start of this year, we were all hopeful that Rivian would begin deliveries of its R1T electric pickup this June, but that launch was pushed back to July. With the launch of the R1S electric SUV scheduled to happen a few weeks later, sometime in August, we've been curious if it would happen. This week, however, we learned that Rivian has pushed its launch plans back a little further, with initial deliveries of the R1T due to take place in September. Although frustrating for any reservation holder, especially those who paid extra for a launch edition vehicle, it's worth noting that this delay is being blamed on the current semiconductor shortage, something that also pushed back the Canadian launch of the ID4. It's frustrating for sure, but at least it's not a large delay. Swedish electric airplane manufacturer Hart Aerospace, which is in the process of bringing the ES-19 electric airliner to market, has announced that it's received two major orders that could really cement it a place at the top of the electric airline industry. United Airlines and Mesa Air Group have both signed purchase agreements for as many as 100 ES-19s each, allowing each carrier to go all electric for regional flights. The ES-19 is a four-engine turboprop capable of flying up to 250 miles, 400 kilometers per charge, and, as the name suggests, will seat 19 passengers. The ES-19 isn't expected to go into series production until 2026, but this really does show how eager some airlines are to go all-electric when possible. And finally, if you've made any kind of long-distance trip in an electric car, you'll know how far you can travel per charge. Really does depend on the weather, your driving style, and how the car is set up, as well as a host of other things. Hone your driving style, and most modern EVs can get between three and four miles of range per kilowatt hour of electricity. But in the UK this week, Fergal McGrath, Kevin Brooker, and BBC journalist Paul Clinton drove a Ford Mustang Mark E from John O'Groats to Land's End, setting a new record-breaking efficiency of 6.54 miles per kilowatt hour over the 840 mile, 1,352 kilometer route, expanding range per charge of their Mustang Mark E to over 500 miles, 804 kilometers per charge of its 88 kilowatt hour battery pack. I wonder how long it would take them to cross the US. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, please do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified 
renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch, and when you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you to all enjoy, but until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time! Bye.